Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we are making a handle for the Hand Tool Rescue Screwdriver. Not the Mondo, but his little brother. Let's have some fun. This is the perfect handle kit from Hand Tool Rescue. I made the larger version of this, uh, what, about two years ago when it first came out. And I finally got my hands on this one, which is the actual functional size. Uh, and so this one just came out late last year. And finally getting around to putting a handle on it. Uh, you can buy it pre-made with the handle, but I prefer to actually make it myself. It comes with the pattern, the pins, and the body, so you can do all the layout. I'm actually going to be using 500-year-old English oak. And this is some really cool stuff I got from a friend of the channel when I was in England a few years ago. Uh, he pulled it out of a barn uh, that is at least 500 years old, so we, we know that uh, this is some really well-seasoned English oak. And it's very, very similar to white oak, which makes me very happy. So I'm going to cut out a billet that is roughly the size that it needs to be, minus the thickness of the, the shaft material. And that means resawing it into two scales. I don't want them to match so that the grain continues from one onto the other. Once we get that done, we can then smooth the two inside faces and those will be what mate up against the screwdriver. He comes with the, the patterns on here or you can print them out. Uh, you can even get the, the 3D files so you could 3D print the, the, the fittings to go into it. To uh, fit them on, I'm actually going to apply the pattern onto it and I find it's just easier to do with a glue stick. It sticks on there, you don't have to worry about it coming off and then you can scrape it off. It's a really, really simple step um, just to use a simple glue stick. Um, I used to steal them from the kids and then I found out that uh, uh, they were being made by Gorilla Glue and so I've started using those. Then we can do the rough cutting to, to size. So we'll cut either end down to where the pattern is. We're going to stay a little ways away from the line because we can always come back. And then these angles, we can cut those straight down because the bedding angles are straight. And so that makes it kind of easy. So we can put that in at an angle in the vise and that way our saw is cutting vertically down. And we cut it close break them off, and we're really, really close to the shape here. From here on out, it's just files and rasps. I'm not worrying about splitting it off because I've got a little more space on there than I need. We're going to get really close with a rasp, and then we're going to do the final details of the file. Um, and at this point, we're just getting the, the whole shape relatively close. We're not worrying about getting it dead on uh, because we're going to use the screwdriver itself to get that final fit and, uh, and, and shape onto it. So rasp it into the rough shape hit it with the file and clean it up and then we can set it in here and actually pound it down in and that will score the wood and so I can then clean it back up with the file right up to that scoring mark so I get a nice tight fit and then we go back and forth and see how it's blistering up the corner on there and that lets me know that's where I need to hit and clean it back to that so we can pull it up and put it back in about three or four times back and forth until we get that really nice clean fit. Uh, no, normally I would use a, uh, a little bit uh, slower epoxy, like a 30-minute or even a, uh, uh, a total boat high-performance epoxy. But in this case, I needed to get the video done, so we're just going to use a 5-minute. And for something like this where it's fully encapsulated, that really doesn't matter that much because the screwdriver itself actually holds the wood pieces in. So it does it really, really well. So we can pound that down on, clamp it, let it sit for about 15, 20 minutes or so, and then start in on the next step. The next step is then fitting the other half. And the reason I'm going to do half and half is we want to actually drill the holes through so we fit it down in. Now I could put both on there and drill them or I could fit them both and pre-drill the holes. I, I just prefer the, the solid knowledge of knowing that my holes are exactly where they need to be. So once we have that in shape, we can then come back through and drill the holes to fit into the first one. But while I'm waiting for the glue, I'm just doing the, the final detail on the other one. You can see how we're pounding it down in there and letting the screwdriver itself mark the sizes. When it gets too close to it, well, then we can use our other screwdriver to pull them apart. Yes, you need a screwdriver to make a screwdriver. Isn't that fun? <laughs> but no, once we get this tight and fit and, and cleaning up, then we can move on to the screws. And it really is one of these things about get it close, but always stay away from the line. Don't get it right down to the line, get it close and then come back and adjust a little more and get it closer and then adjust a little more. Never get it all the way until you're like, yeah, it's ready to fit. If I pound it one more time, it'll go in. And that's when you can do that last little bit of shaving with the file and you're good to go. So we're going to drill the holes through the first one now that those have fully cured. And that way we know we have them exactly uh, where they need to be. We can drill through the top and the bottom and then we can glue on 
the second scale. Uh, before we do the gluing on, we take the paper off, and that comes off relatively quickly with a card scraper. It would help if the card scraper was sharp, but oh well. <laughs> it always helps if the tool is sharp, but it never is when you really need it to be, and you don't have time to actually stop and do the sharpening. Apply the epoxy onto the second side, and then clamp that down in. Second verse, same as the first. Uh, don't worry about it being overly heavy. We're going to file and clean this off so if it squeezes out, more the merrier. Uh, there's really no, really no specialty to this. Pound it down in place and then clamp it in. Let it sit and, uh, until it is fully cured. Then we can use the holes that we drilled on the first side to do the final hole all the way through. And this way we know our holes are dead on accurate all the way through. We have a really nice tight fit for the pins. And the pins that come provided, um, really nice brass pins that fit in there. So we can glue those in, pound them in, and uh, cut off any of the excess. Um, I'm actually making my handle slightly oval rather than perfectly round. Uh, I like that slight oval feel because then you get to actually feel the direction of the screwdriver in your hand. Once that's all cured, we can come in with the rasp and really start doing the detail. Again, we're going to stay a long ways away from the line. We're not going to get anywhere near the steel. We're just going to rough it in and then put your hand on it and see how it feels. And then go back and edit. Put your hand on it and see how it feels. And you're just going to go back and forth until it feels good. Nice thing about the brass is you can go right over it with the rasp and you get in this nice clean transition from one to the other. Once we get it down close, then we're going to start rounding it around. And I'm going into a finer and a finer rasp until we get close to the shape. I'll put my hand on it and see are there any ridges, anything more I need to do to it. And at this point, I'm going to be going until I just touch the steel. That means I have a little bit of wood still to work on there. And then I can come back with a nice clean file and really detail it in. And at this point, you really start to see the grain coming out and see those quarter sawn flecks. And at this point, then we go into a finer file and a finer file until we're down to about as fine as files can get. And at this point, we're trying to still shape it. Files are for the shaping of the wood. We're getting rid of ridges. We want to get a nice smooth transition. So I'll be constantly feeling it. And you'll see I'll rotate the screwdriver uh, so that I get a nice smooth transition across it. And uh, yeah, just feel it. And you'll suddenly notice, oh, I need to take off more here. We're not really looking for anything. We're just feeling it. Once that's done, we can start moving on to the sandpaper. And I do use sandpaper on anything that goes in my hand, anything that's an organic shape. Um, it just gives a little bit smoother. It also works some dust into the pores so that the oil gets drawn in farther. Uh, you do get a little bit better um, penetration from the oil when you, uh, when you fill it with, with uh, sanding dust. And so we're going to start with a 200 grit and then go to a 300 grit and then a 400 grit uh, until we get really nice and smooth. And while we're doing those, we're also using those to polish the steel beside them so that we're getting a good, clean transition. Now, you do have to be careful of the steel getting into the oak. In this case, it's not that big a deal because I really want to bring out that grain pop that you get with the tannins. So now that we've done it and we are really happy with the feel of it, now we get the happy part, the boiled linseed oil. And oh, what it does to this oak is just gorgeous. That honey color that comes through there, you really see the age and quality of it. I'm going to let that soak up as much as it wants and uh, probably put two or three soakings on there. Then uh, once it's out of that, I'll wipe off the excess and immediately go into the paste wax. Paste wax sits on there for a couple hours, and then we polish it off and get that really nice, clean, smooth surface. Really love how this looks, especially with the live oak of the other one. Happy. So there you have it. I am in love with this. 500-year-old uh, English oak uh, came from when I was over in England. I got uh, a friend gave it to me, and I've been using it here and there. Uh, a while ago, Hand Tool Rescue came out with this one. It is an impractical and huge and basically useless screwdriver, though I have found a few good uses for it. Recently, he came out with this one, and it's taken me forever to finally get one, but mine finally came. And uh, this one is actually very useful. It's just about the right size for the chip breaker and actual functional things on a plane. And it is, it is the most perfect handle you could ever have on a screwdriver. It is just absolutely gorgeous, and it feels so good, and makes me happy. Uh, yeah, I am really, really loving this, and I'm hoping he comes out with one step smaller. That would be awesome. Uh, maybe, a, uh, maybe a Robertson's head or Phillips head, and we could have a full set of these, and I would, I would love it. I would make a bunch of these handles because this is just this is gorgeous and I am looking forward to using it for years and years to come. So if you want to see this, I have a link to making this video as well as a link to both screwdrivers down below. You can make your own. Uh, he is doing some amazing things with these, 
and really bringing back one of the best screwdrivers to ever exist. So thank you, for Eric, for making these happen. I am really looking forward to using it in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Have you made one? What have you done differently? What woods do you use? Um, I have thought about doing you know, 3D printing handles for it because there's things like that you can do. Uh, it's really just kind of a cool project. So if you want to find out more about that, there's links to it down below. And do let me know your thoughts down below as well as hitting like, share, subscribe. Those things really do help out the channel. Thank you. Uh, they get us in front of more people and they help this channel to grow. So that really means a lot. If you want to take it one step farther and help even more, there are a bunch of people scrolling over here. They are the patrons on Patreon. They are the ones quite literally keeping the lights on, keeping us going because we are sponsored by you. Everyone who watches this, you are our sponsors, not the people who make things. So I actually bought this. He didn't send it to me. I bought this. He didn't send it to me. That's because I want to be able to say what I want to say, not what the sponsors want me to say. And if you like that, think about becoming a patron. There's links to that down below. Or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. So I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Some cars are now offering driverless technology. So soon we won't need these anymore.